Well, today we're working on a light box out of a kitchen that uh, has recently gone through uh, a pretty decent renovation, uh, but the light box was overlooked for whatever reason at the time. Uh, this light box is typical what you'd find in homes from the 80s, and uh, normally they came stuffed with uh, four four foot long fluorescent tubes and then a layer of uh, translucent plastic sheeting to sort of help diffuse the light. And uh, these skylight boxes, as they were known, uh, were popular. They work not too bad, uh, but they're very dated. And this one, what we're gonna try doing is we're gonna try putting in a new uh, LED panel. And it is a complete uh, sheet, one piece, two feet by four feet, uh, roughly, uh, of LED and we're going to see how that goes. This box is not particularly well made so we're probably going to be able to uh, salvage at least some of it and uh, use that as the carcass for the new box and we'll see where we go from there. Oops, one of the brad nails uh, bit me. This little flat bar is sometimes uh, referred to as a hive tool and uh, they use them to separate um, the boxes from the supers on the beehives. Um, but it's also a Finnish carpenter's best friend. It's uh, very sharp on each end and uh, there's just many uses you can use with these. Um, the next size up of flat bar is just, uh, it's a lot stronger but it's too broad and uh, trying to separate moldings off like this it just um, doesn't do the job, it tends to wreck more stuff. Um, but uh, these little guys, they work great. Okay. Just gonna knock off some glue residue. keep this edge sharpened quite well and I use it as just a rough scraper for this kind of thing when I don't want to bring out my good woodworking carbide scraper um, 
just in case I run into a nail or something. This I don't really worry too much about. Uh, but it does a great job of knocking off the old glue and bits of wood and whatnot that are stuck to it. Now we got the glue lines cleaned up off of here and uh, we'll set these aside and um, I think they should be able to be reused no problem and it's decent wood Just work with what we have if we can this is garbage this was a stretcher that went across here we're not going to have that anymore that stretcher was necessary because the way these boxes were designed is that you would put the uh, pla translucent plastic sheet wouldn't be one piece, it would be two pieces. And you would slip the sheet in, flex it a little bit, and there would actually be a little bit of uh, a gap between the two sheets. If you had one sheet, you would not get that sheet within the four edges of this box. But by having two sheets, you could bend it and then slide it into place. That leaves a gap in the middle between the two sheets, so the solution of the time was stick a stretcher in there over the gap. And it worked fine. Uh, it's just not as stylish nowadays. Interestingly, on the construction here, uh, it looks like they actually cut this box uh, a little short, maybe to begin with. Um, there's corner gussets, which is great. That's, that's pretty well a must. Um, but they got filler blocks inside here behind these little 90 degree moldings and that kind of sucks because uh, that means that's that much material we actually don't have to work with this. Um, so we'll see whether or not we can still use it or not. But uh, I suspect that the person doing this didn't really have a great idea of what they were doing because uh, this is very basic woodworking uh, types of things. Nope, doesn't look like we're going to be saving those. And now that I see that this carcass is too short, um, it's probably not going to be worth the time to try to reuse much, if not, or if any of this at all. I think we'll just break out a new sheet and uh, get started from square one. Sometimes by the time you finish monkeying around trying to save something, it just doesn't really pay to... Uh, try to do that. The moldings though I think are reworkable and um, I think a bit of cleaning up and uh, hitting them with a the router, putting on a little more contemporary uh, flat bevel finish instead of the cove on the edges. Um, I think that uh, edge treatment will, will make them look pretty decent and uh, we'll see if we can't maybe reuse these parts. All right so I found a a uh, piece of 5 8 cabinet ply crop uh, that's going to be perfect for this job. Um, it's got a little bit of discoloration on it, um, which is just fine because we're going to paint this when we're done. And uh, I'm just going to put a uh, rip off the factory edge and put a clean edge on with the track saw. And then I'm going to rip three more pieces at about four inches wide. And that'll give us the stock we need to build our new case.
And this little offcut we'll uh, just use for some bracing. And uh, if I should do the job well, we won't have much waste left from this crop. So it's always nice when you get to use a crop up. The Festool has a bit of setup time, there's no doubt about that, but the uh, quality of cuts that it makes is second to none. And um, I've done whole kitchen projects before just using this. And um, you know, yeah, it is slower than uh, a sliding saw, like a table saw, if you've got a cabinet saw, something like that. Um, you know, that's great in the shop, but sometimes on site, uh, I've done rework on cabinets where um, the original carcasses are staying, um, but they're getting reskinned or um, some modifications made. And it's not uncommon, at least around here, for the be site built cabinets from the 60s and 70s. Um, carpenters were actually building them on site. And so everything was a little bit, um, a little bit unsquare, a little bit different from one box to the next. It just doesn't have the repl replicable um, quality of uh, or ability that you get when you're running panels through a sliding table saw and um, you have stop set and, and whatnot so so it's very capable it just does take a little bit of patience Show you this here. We have a line drawn across here that corresponds to how much extra distance this bevel takes up. And if you're cutting a 45, you'll always know that this distance will be equal to this distance just because of basic geometry. So this is 5 eighths thick ply. So that means we're going to add 5 eighths here. So we'll add five eighths twice, which is one and a quarter. And that'll allow us to measure off the outside of the project, as opposed to trying to set a tape right on the edge here, which is a good place for mistakes to happen. So we need this to be 48 inches inside. So where's our 48 right there? Plus an inch and a quarter, which is two five eighths, one for each end. We have 49 and a quarter. longer we need 49 and a quarter and uh, we can't get two pieces out um, these are going to become the ends of our box and that'll be just fine one thing we have to do is reverse this cut first and then we can measure two feet of this and uh, we'll be off to the races
Same thing we did with the other piece. We're going to add 5 eighths twice over. In this case, that gives us 25 and 1 quarter. And that's the length we need for our short ends. Okay, now we got our basic components of what's going to be our box. It's going to have an inside dimension of 24 by 48 inches, 4 inches deep. Even though the panel is only two inches deep, um, we're going four inches because there's going to be a surface mount uh, octo box mounted up on the ceiling so we can put the new wiring into that and do it properly. And uh, that along with the pigtail extension coming off of the back of the leg, I want to be able to have enough room in there that when we put the panel up, we're not worrying about trying to fish wires around because there's not going to be any extra room in there. That panel's going to fit with just about an eighth of an inch at the three sixteenths of an inch of clearance on each side. So. There's lots of different ways to join miters up to make them strong. In a case like this, we could use biscuits, um, but I'm just going to glue blocks in on the back side because we have the back side open and easy to work with. And we also need mounting blocks that are going to go onto the top edge of this and they will go up against the ceiling and allow us to screw into the floor joists uh, or ceiling joists. Um, we're going to have support in there anyways, uh, just by the very nature of having those blocks in. We're just going to run the blocks full length of the inside and that'll allow us to use them to brace the corner miters.